subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. An oil well in Assam's Tinsukia district experienced an explosion on May 27th. This well belongs to Oil India Limited or OIL and is their Bagjan oil field. It is located in the eastern part of Assam. The explosion was a blowout that typically occurs when machine or mechanical failure results in an uncontrolled release of crude oil or gas from an oil production well. For almost 15 days now, the gas has been flowing out, but the well caught fire on June 9th, leading to the death of two fire personnel there as well. Environmentalists and locals fear the damage caused to the nearby environment and local ecology from this gas leak as well as the subsequent fire. There have been images of dead dolphins that have already gone viral on social media in the nearby Maguri Motapang Beel, which is a wetland just 500 meters away and an important area for local and migratory birds. The area is also close to the Dibru Saikhova National Park, designated as a biosphere reserve. The Beel, uh, which is the name for a wetland in Assamese, is a protected area and is home to over a hundred domestic and migratory species of birds, as well as many tens of species of fishes on which the local fishing community also depends. The area falls within the region of Brahmaputra's flood plains and is a part of the Indo-Burma biodiversity hotspot. India has three other biodiversity hotspots, one is in the Himalayas, one in the Western Ghats, and the third one in the Sunda land, which includes the Malay Peninsula, Java, Gulf of Thailand, etc. But in India also includes the Nicobar group of islands. So there are four biodiversity hotspots in India. This entire region, this Indo-Burmese hotspot and Assam is watery and is made up of swamps and wetlands. The region includes multiple other animals, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and many many other varieties of flora and fauna, a lot of which are threatened or even endangered. It is this area that the crude gas leaked into. The oil leaked into the water and now the waters of this wetland are also on fire as the floating oil burns. There have been recent reports of some tremors after the gas blowout and subsequent fire and now the Northeast Institute of Science and Technology is carrying out studies to determine if there was any seismicity that was generated because of the fire and the blowout. Thousands of people have been relocated already, but the tremors have forced another 1,000 people to leave their homes for the Guijin relief camps. Meanwhile, it appears that global experts have been roped in to help shut down the fire and close the well. So why exactly are fires in oil wells so hard to put off? The most obvious and intuitive reason is the sheer quantity of fuel supply which can cause the fires to burn continuously for several days, weeks or even months. One of the largest ever oil fires were in Kuwait caused by the Iraqi military forces who deliberately set fire to nearly 600 by some estimates even 700 oil wells before leaving the country as the US forces started to move in in 1991. The fires burned from the February of 1991 all the way up to November that year, by which time they were extinguished. Had they been allowed to burn naturally and fully, they would have burned to over three years and by some estimates beyond five years. So if there's seemingly indefinite supply of fuel that can fuel a fire for months and years, how are oil well fires put off in the first place? The most obvious way is doing what is being done for all fires around the world, which is attempting to douse the fire with water. Firefighters use powerful jet sprays of water or use gas turbines to blow a fine mist to the base of the fire. Up to 90% of all Kuwaiti oil fires were extinguished with water. But since there is so much fuel, this is often extremely difficult to execute. So another popular method is similar to that of blowing a candle out. A candle is blown out by wind, which pushes oxygen and the flame temporarily away from the fuel that the flame is touching. This method is similarly employed in an oil fire as well by using a dynamite or a powerful explosive that produces a shock wave which can 
for a moment lift flames and oxygen away from the surface of the oil briefly before the well can be sealed and capped. There are other methods also that are available and employed. The Soviet Union has successfully and famously or infamously used nuclear explosions underground to melt the rock around the oil fire which would end up sealing the drilled hole. Metal can be used to raise the plumes or seal off the fire as well and dry chemicals that come in powder form can also be used on much smaller fires. A fire in an oil well can be caused by explosions and of course arson but also natural events like lightning. But a high pressure blowout such as what happened in Assam at the Bagjan field is the most common cause. A blowout occurs because the mechanical systems that maintain pressure have failed. Many modern wells do have blowout preventers to stop oil from gushing out. Perhaps the biggest blowout and subsequent fire that most people today are aware of in pop culture was the Deepwater Horizon blowout of 2010 on the offshore drilling rig that was owned by Transocean. The rig at the time was leased to BP from 2001 and it was drilling off the coast of the US. An exploratory well was being drilled and had reached the last stages of drilling when a little bit of seawater gushed out from below, soon followed by a lot of water and drilling mud and then methane and more water. The gas then ignited and caused a series of explosions which caused a series of fires and then ultimately resulted in a full firestorm or an inferno. The blowout preventer had failed on the rig. 11 workers were killed and others were evacuated to hospitals. In less than just 36 hours, in just a day and a half, Deepwater Horizon sank fully and is now sitting 5,000 feet below the ocean. The Bagjan oil well has already lost over 650 tons of oil and will continue to burn for a while. We are not sure how long yet, but reports last week have indicated that the place can be doused within the next 21 days or so. Experts have been called in, with a Singapore-based company reportedly being roped in to assist with the dowsing of the fire. Meanwhile, the fire continues to burn and we wait. If you like this video and if you like our science coverage, please consider contributing to the print. You can find a link to do so at the top of our webpage or you may do so at theprint.in contribute. This is Sandhya Ramesh from Bengaluru for the print.